good day. So we are going to be doing scripture reading of titled Don't Serve the Problem. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. Isaiah 55 verse 7. You can't win a victory as long as the problem is the biggest thing in your life. The Lord woke me up to that fact many years ago. At that time, I was facing some difficulties in my ministry that seemed so big to me. I thought about them from morning till night. Even though I was standing against them, I was thinking more about the problems than about the scripture promises I was standing on. Then I saw something in Matthew 6, 24, 25. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. I'd read that scripture hundreds of times, but that day I saw something I'd never noticed before. I saw that immediately after Jesus said, no man can serve two masters, he said, take no thought. Suddenly it hit me. We serve our thoughts. That's why Isaiah 55, for us to forsake our thoughts and by the word, take God's thoughts. That's why 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, to cast down thoughts that challenge the word and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Do you want deliverance from your problems today? Then quit serving them. Quit allowing them to consume your thought life. Amen to that. God, I've been dealing with that too. Just negative thoughts in my thought life, Father. Take them out. Cast them aside, Father. Break them apart. Shatter them, God. And fill my head with holy and righteous thoughts, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And my heart as well. And don't wait until circumstances change to do it. And God, I pray that for everybody watching as well. Instead, realize the circumstances won't ever change until you switch from wrong to right thinking. I know that's not easy to do, especially in the midst of heavy darkness and trial. But you can do it if you'll do these, th these three things. First, remember you aren't alone. You have the word, God's thoughts. You have the Holy Spirit to strengthen you and you have the mind of Christ. Second, Get around people who are full of faith. Instead of rehearsing your problem, let them do the talking. Make yourself listen. Join in with their faith and resist darkness. Third, praise God. Do whatever it takes to, to make yourself praise. When you begin to praise, God's presence will turn back those worried thoughts and make them fall. Just like every morning, no matter where I'm at, I'm always going back to doing praise and worship, doing devotions, seeking the Lord, repenting every single day of my life. Your problems are not the biggest thing in your life. Jesus is. Serve him with your thoughts and he will set you free. Scripture reading is Isaiah 55. And I can pull that up here too so that you guys can read along with me. And then I'll read commentation from the Bible. I got my biblio, biblio. Invitation to the thirsty. Isaiah 55. Come all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have, you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Man, I ate toast this morning, it makes my belly bigger. But uh, I want a skinny belly. <laughs> uh, three, give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the righteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. 
it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and the trees of the fields will clap their hands instead of the thorn bushes. Uh, instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. I was walking around Eli's garden yesterday, and I read his story, and I posted on YouTube if you guys want to listen to chapter 6 of uh, 12 Jews Discover Messiah. And he showed me the myrtle plants that the Bible talks about, which is really beautiful. This will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Isaiah 55. Food costs money, lasts only a shorter time, and meets only physical needs, but God offers us free nourishment that feeds our soul. How do we get it? We are to come, 55.1. Listen, 55.2. Seek and call on God, 55.6. God's salvation is freely offered, but to nourish our souls, we must eagerly receive it. We will starve spiritually without this food, as surely as we will starve physically without our daily bread. God's covenant with David promised a permanent home in the land of Israel, land for Israel. No threat from pagan nations and no wars, 2 Samuel 7, 10, 11. But Israel did not fulfill its part of the covenant to obey God and stay away from idols. Even so, God ready to renew his covenant again. He is a forgiving God. Isaiah tells us to call on the Lord while he is near. God is not planning to move away from us, but we often move far from him or erect barriers of sin between us. Don't wait until you have drifted far away from God to seek him. Turning to him may be far more difficult later in life, or God may come to judge the earth before you decide to turn to him. Seek God now while you can, before it's too late. The people of Israel were foolish to act as if they knew what God was thinking and planning. His knowledge of wisdom are far greater than any humans. We are foolish to try to fit God into our mold, to make his plans and purposes conform to ours. Instead, we must strive to fit into his plans. God commanded his people to rest and honor him on the Sabbath, Exodus uh, 28 to 11. He wants us to serve him every day, but he wants us to make one day special when we can rest and focus our thoughts on him. For Israelites, this special day was the Sabbath, Saturday. Some Christians set Saturday aside as a special day, but many accept Sunday, the day of the week that Jesus rose from the dead, as the Lord's Day, a day of rest and honor to God. Do you make Sunday special? Do you make your Shabbat special? 56.3. <clears throat> I've gone beyond it, but that's okay. Isaiah, Isaiah clearly proclaims the radical message that God's blessings are for all people, even Gentiles and eunuchs, who are often excluded from worship and not even considered citizens in Israel. Whatever your race, uh, social position, work, or financial situations, God's blessings are as much for you as anyone's else. No one must exclude in any way those God chooses to bless. Amen to that. And you really can feel that here in Israel, that Israel is the great, the great acceptance, the great blessing, the great chosen, and that you are kind of exempt as a Gentile. You kind of don't fit the mold. You kind of don't make the, the mold, right? God makes the mold. That's the thing here. And he chooses who he chooses, Gentile, Jew, whoever, to love him. And we need to respect that. We need to respect God's love as he chooses. We also need to respect the scripture as he chooses as well. And remember that Israel is Israel, right? And the church is the church. And that his people are his people. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for a renewing mindset in me that I would love my team, that I would love um, Israel, that I would love the Jews, that I would love um, even the nations surrounding God, love their people in a way that God loves them, wants to love them out of darkness, God. Because when they are consumed by that darkness, he turns that darkness on them, God. And we want them to see light and love and forgiveness and repentance of their sins, Father, and turn to you. What wonder it would be, what wonderfulness um, it would be to see all these surrounding nations, Father, turn to praise the Most High God and to accept Yeshua Christos as their Savior, including Israel, Father, the Messiah, the fulfillment. And God, I pray that you would, you would make uh, um, an open heart to, 
to pronounce your name uh, here in Jerusalem, Jesus. I know many rabbis believe that you may very well be the Messiah, God. Let them speak openly of their love for you, Yeshua. Let them come to realizing grace and receive the, uh, the power therein in the name of Yeshua and his grace and his goodness and change, Father. Thank you, God, for shifting the rocks inside of me. I pray, God, that you would remove what is of rock, though, and make of flesh. Um, shifting rocks is not, is not good, but there is a shifting inside of me, Father, taking place. And I thank you for your changes that um, quite often I do not see. God, take away all bitterness from inside of me. Take, take all hatred. Take all anger. Take all hurt away, God. It's in hurt that I sin, Father, and I need healing, Lord. So I repent for my hurt. And Father, I also repent for the hurt of many others who are watching God, that you would also take their hurt away and instead give them a heart of flesh filled with the fruits of the Holy Spirit and bear much fruit and abide in the, in the vine of Yeshua, giving off love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control of the Holy Spirit, God. Surrounded by your warrior and guardian angels and covered by your full armor, God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, and on our feet the shoes of the gospel of peace, and in our hands a double-edged sword of the Spirit to lift up our brothers and sisters and to slash down the enemy, Father. May we speak on, think on, dwell on holy things, God, that we do not surrender ourselves to our thoughts, but surrender ourselves to thoughts that are greater and higher, the thoughts of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the thoughts of Yeshua Christos, the thoughts of the Holy Spirit. We love you, God. Change our hearts, change our minds, change our ways. We surrender our free will to you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to you, Yeshua Christos, to you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Bye for now.